Thank you, Michael. <clears throat> well, this, these are three very tough facts to follow. I'm just going to talk about simple, everyday boilerplate. Well, we all know that the right place to apply internal fixation on the wrist is on the volar side, because on the dorsal aspect, the extensor tendons are always in contact with the bone surface. So anything that you place dorsally is going to affect tendon function, but not so palmarly, where you have a very large volume of space occupied by the pronator quadratus, where you can apply all the fixation that you want without doing any harm, as long as you have a good reduction and you avoid distally the watershed line, which is really a ridge where the flexor tendons come in contact with the bone surface. So that is why we go volar. So I organized this talk in, in 10 tips and tricks of how to do this well. So the first thing is we have to know who our enemy is. The most common fracture of the human skeleton, half of them have articular involvement. And the articular involvement is what makes them fun and difficult. And we must understand the anatomy of this fracture patterns. Um, most typically, the articular surface is broken in three. The fracture lines exit the surface wherever there are no ligaments uh, originating or inserting. And these three fragments, uh, uh, which we know well, do vary in size and shape. The ant anteromedial fragment, which is a volar, lun uh, volar lunate fragment, is very constant in um, surface area, while the rest of the radius is distributed between the posterior medial fragment and the radial fragment, because the fracture line exits either radial or ulnar to the origin of the dorsal uh, radiocarpal ligament. So knowing that in mind, it becomes very easy to treat this fracture from the volar side. Another very important point is, why are these fractures difficult to treat? Well, if we look at the scaphoid fossa, that are, the subchondral plate is supported by two very strong columns of, of um, metaphyseal bone, while the lunate fossa is only supported by one. And why is this? It's because the forces are applied different. On the scaphoid fossa, the uh, centroid of force application is really in the center of the fossa, while on the lunate fossa is all the way palmarly. So there is no reason for a dorsal column, and that is great. But what happens when we have a fracture? The lunate fossa is offset from the radial shaft. So the, there has little support, but worst of all, the force is applied to this little fragment. So this is a very unstable situation. No wonder we have problems with the volar marginal fragment. Okay. We must indicate correctly our procedures. We understand that uh, elderly patients can tolerate a lot of deformity. There's a limit to how much deformity they can tolerate, but not so young and active patients. Young active patients really require anatomical reduction of the joint surface, and that can be uh, easily achieved uh, with a volar plate, provided uh, proper technique is uh, utilized. And these patients do exceedingly well. By three months, they're back to business. And I was fortunate to have this young lady who at three months was able to lift her own weight with the affected hand from the examining table. I don't know how she did it, but I had to take a picture. Now, that doesn't mean that we should only operate young people. And what is that of a fracture that is too distal? I have no idea what that means. Well, this patient is 85. She has a very comminuted uh, distal radius surface and it's very shortened and deformed. But if you create that perfect subchondral support, you will hold it up in space and it will heal and you'll have a happy patient. Older patients benefit from this procedure because they get back to their lives very quickly and they can do things like use their walking aids. But to do this properly, you have to do different. This is not something you can take care of through a Henry approach, the standard way we always did this. We have to go more distal. We have to cross the creases with a dart to prevent hypertrophic scarring. We have to go distal as far as the trapezial, trapezial tunnel and take the um, FCR out of its tunnel and move it ulnarly. But the nice thing about opening the, the trapezial uh, tunnel, you're actually 
uh, uh, partially releasing the transverse carpal ligament, now you can move the flexor tendons, the median nerve, all the way ulnarly without undue tension. So you can get down to the volar lunate fragment, treat volar marginal fragments. There is no need to do a more ulnar incision. And there's our watershed line. We must elevate all the soft tissues as distal as the watershed line, but not beyond, because beyond is where the volar capsular ligaments uh, originate. So we must know the anatomy. We, we must be able to identify that volar uh, lunate uh, um, prominence because it marks the watershed line. We must identify and release the radial septum, open up the uh, first compartment, retract its tendons, and then access our brachioradialis and release it in such a way that we can, if we want to, repair it on the way out. We also must elevate everything just proximal to the watershed line, which means elevating with a scalpel, because this is not muscle. This is the transitional fibrous zone, very thick periosteum. Go to the other side. Yeah, they are dorsal fractures. We must get to the dorsal side to remove the hematoma and reduce articular fragments. So pronate the proximal fragment out of the way. This is very physiologic as the proximal fragment is uh, irrigated by the anterior interosseous artery. So you're not devascularizing anything. You can treat very complex fractures with a simple volar approach. One nice trick is to use the, the plate as a reduction template. So if you apply the plate to the proximal fragment, pull on the fingers and push on the, um, on the dorsal skin with one hand, you can pretty much hold the reduction. <clears throat> do not commit to the first one. So do your reduction, get temporary fixation, but don't marry your reduction until you're absolutely sure that you're perfect. So place the plate two millimeters proximal to the watershed line and try to get those screws two millimeters below the dorsal subchondral plate. So complex fractures can be treated with multiple fixed angle temporary K wires, and then you can change one by one uh, for a screw. Consider the fracture from any angle. So look at the dorsal ulnar corner, look at the radial stylet, try to get a screw out each one of these uh, uh, points, and then do the extended initial view to make sure you are not in the DRUJ. And this is a beautiful view. Uh, this was uh, invented by Pat Owens from University of Miami. Basically on the examining table, flex the elbow and bring your hand in the supinated position that you were operating all the way to the fluoro beam and take an x-ray there. Have a good support structure. This is very important. Oh, <clears throat> if you create the correct subchondral scaffold, you don't even need to uh, at, uh, obtain fixation in a fragment. It's just holding the articular surface in space. And the important is to avoid pitfalls. We went volarly not to injure extensor tendons, but if you try real hard, you can still injure them by making screws too long. Here's one EPL rupture because that screw was too long. Or you can injure flexor tendons. If you don't reduce the fracture anatomically, the plate will not be flat on the bone surface and the tendons will suffer. And then let's not forget that volar marginal fragment. So I was very proud with this result many years ago. And at four months, it looked like this because my volar marginal fragment failed to heal and that was difficult to fix. And finally, always have a plan B. If you can't get the reduction through the extended CR approach, then try distal fragment first. Apply the distal uh, part of the plate to the um, distal fragment, put in the screws, and then just lever your reduction down. Get the length before you uh, <clears throat> fix it, the, uh, the radius. Uh, you can use fragment specific. I do this about once every 10 years. And there are indications to do other things, just such as uh, in these terrible injuries from our motorcycling friends, use a spanning plane. It's a great technique. Thank you.